Hello and welcome to Slick Willy Fly. Hope you have your cocktail. Okay, so today we are going to get in on the Slick Willy Micro Roach. The Micro Roach is a smaller version of the famous cockroach fly. This is on a size 2.0. This is a pretty traditional uh, tarpon fly in Florida. So I like to tie the same fly on a size 2 hook, a much smaller version that I can cast up into the mangroves and um, I think that this particular fly right here is super effective up into the mangroves. It's awesome. Okay, so let's, um, let's get it started. What I've got is a, I'm going to get a size 2 saltwater hook. And I'm going to use 100 denier white thread. Which I have right here. Um, sometimes I consider putting some kind of ballast on this hook to make it right hook up. But instead of getting any kind of ballast on this hook, we are going to do our very best to remember to attach a weed guard. All right, so what do we start with here? We start with a little bit of crystal flash, and I'm going to use pearl crystal flash. And I don't think I have one little piece out from a previous fly that we can incorporate. I'm going to save one for later. So I'm just basically folding these over. And I'm not really at all worried about the length. I'm just basically capturing it at about the halfway mark. Nice and hard, fold it over, capturing it nice and hard. And the reason I wasn't worried about it is because I'm going to cut the length. So now I'm going to grab my scissors. And I don't, definitely don't want longer than the hook length. I want just shorter than the hook length, I would say. The shank of the hook. Something just like that. I think that looks great. So now I have this grizzly uh, feather cape here. So I'm going to take four feathers. I take two from each side, matching. So I'm getting two from the left. And now I'm going to get two very similar ones off the right. And I only grabbed one. Sometimes the hard part is separating just two feathers. Two. Nice. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the opposite side first, which makes my life easier. I line up the feathers so they're perfectly in line with each other. And then about a a hook and a half I would say it's a good length I don't want them too short even though I typically don't like long flies in this case I want them to have a little bit of length so that they can have a little bit of action and I want them to make sure that they sit correctly I don't want them to be flat I want them to sit just like that so they're splaying away from the hook shank. And I could trim off these tags. Let's not feel like I got both of them. There's the other one. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. That came out really good. So now I'm going to do the side closest to me. And I line these guys up. And this, this time it's a little bit easier because I have a length. I'm going to line them up. I tend to put them on a little bit long. A couple of loose wraps. Now I can get them where I want them. And if I'm not happy, but I am happy, I could always unwrap. But I think that came out really good. And remove the tag. So now um, we need to talk about fishing for a second. So when I tie this fly, I have snook on the mind. And snook are a, a species that the big ones, I think, I believe truly in my heart, that they're nighttime feeders. Early morning hours or, you know, just at dusk or in the evening. So I bought this... Um, Glow in the dark flashaboo. And I don't have any experience with this glow in the dark flashaboo, but I figured what the heck? We can try it. And this feels like a good fly to try it on. So I cut off, I, I can't even tell you, maybe it's five strands there. I don't know. But I'm gonna go ahead and double these up. And I'm going to put them on the hook on my side not on the side side but let's say top side and then I'm gonna take half of them to the opposite side make sure they're locked in And now I'm going to make sure that everything is tied in. Nice. Just like that. And if these are too long, and they appear to be too long, I can trim them. I tend to trim them individually, because then it's staggered. I, I like stagger. So yeah, nice. Happy with that. So now the next step is a little bit of deer hair. And a while back I bought this, it's called winter deer hair. I picked up this little bag, it was really cheap. And I just think it looks awesome. It's got this really cool coloration and uh, really happy with it. And I think it looks great on this particular fly. So I'm gonna grab a clump, I don't know, about that big. And I'm going to take it off the patch, just like that. And the tips usually are pretty close to aligned. So now I'm just going to remove all these little short hairs. The tips stayed pretty close to aligned. So I'm going to put it on. Now, where's my length? My length is about a quarter of an inch beyond the bend of the hook. So a couple of loose wraps, just like that. And now I'm going to use my fingers to distribute this around the hook, just like that, all the way around, making sure I get to the bottom. So now I'm gonna use my left hand to capture all of that deer hair and keep it nice and tight while I crank on this other side. making that nice and locked in, just like that. So now I get my thread out of the way, get my scissors in here, and trim up all these shorties gotta go. Because that's where we're gonna build the head. So 
I have a vision of snook fishing in Chukaluski, throwing this thing in low, low, low light conditions up into the uh, mangroves. So for me, it's very important that this fly be quick and easy to tie and cheap. So you see it's super cheap, a couple of feathers, a little bit of crystal flash, um, and some deer hair. Doesn't get cheaper than that. So I am going to put on, I think, one more, one more little piece of crystal flash. I can use pearl again, or I can use something with a little color. Got this little pinky looking stuff. I think I'm going to use pearl. And I have one. Oh, nice. And I don't want a lot. So this is a half a strand that I had from a previous fly. I'm just going to put one side on the side itself. Lock it in. Bring it to the opposite side. And lock it in. I'm not really on the side. I'm like on the side and top. And I'm going to make sure that I cut it about even with um, my feathers. Not, not longer than the feathers. But it gives it just a little bit more flash. You know, flash is one of these things that like, sometimes I think that I have too much flash on flies. And sometimes I think I don't have enough flash on flies. And I don't know, it's just a, it's a weird thing. So now I'm going to go ahead and put a whip finish in this. Actually, I take that back. Should I put my weed guard on now? I am. I have this um, um, hard mono. And I don't have my pliers handy. They're in my uh, garage. So I'm going to go ahead and use my my um, Tackle plier here to make a flat spot as best I can. And when I when I do this, I want to do this in a way that um gosh, I wonder if I should put the eyes on first. I'm very torn right now. I've done this both ways, and each time I do it, I, th there's a benefit to doing it before, and there's a benefit to doing it after. So I'm a little torn right now. But one thing that I know I can absolutely do is change thread colors. Doesn't matter what color thread I use to attach that. So I just went from a white 100 denier to a red 70 denier. And it's this, this thread is only, its only purpose is to change the head to red and the only reason I'm doing that is because I don't know if the fish think it's gills or if they think it's a wounded fish or what they think but I think that when you have the red you get more strikes I think I'm going to put the eye on I'm going to be careful not to use too much resin. So then I could put on the, um, the weed guard. So I'm going to whip finish here. And then we'll reapply the thread after I put my eyes on. So for the eyes, I'm going to go ahead and use, um, where'd they go? These, um, eight millimeter um, epoxy eyes. 
And unfortunately, I am out of my gel super glue, which really makes my life a lot easier when I do this. So I'm, they have a little bit of adhesive to them. I'm going to hope and pray that that adhesive will be enough. just has to stick long enough for me to get my thick UV resin on and that one fell off Let's try again if I pinch them both together oh, it's so much easier when you have the super glue That doesn't look bad right there. Gosh, let's see if I get lucky. I can just get a drop in. Just to lock these guys just like that. Flip it over and do the same thing on the bottom. a tiny bit more I don't think they locked in the way I thought they did I know it doesn't look great right now, but it will look good when I'm done, I promise. That little glow in the dark stuff looks pretty wicked. Okay, so I'm fairly sure that those eyes are not moving. So now I'm going to take my um my mono 
and I'm going to use the natural curve of the hard mono to help me apply it to the um, hook. So first I gotta put my thread on. Cut my tag off here. It doesn't matter how long the mono is right now. The only thing that matters is that it gets on there nice and hard. So now I'm going to bring it to the opposite side and I'm going to do my very best to lock this in I think I've got that pretty good right now. They're definitely locked in. I like the position. A lot, actually. So now I'm just gonna bring my thread up a little. And I'm going to cut this off. With finish, remove the thread. Okay, so now to get my epoxy going again, my UV resin going again. And we're going to use a little bit different UV resin this time. We're not going to use that really, really thick stuff. Trying to get that just the way I want it. We're going to use a little bit uh, thinner viscosity. You notice I'm not worried at all about um, cutting the length on those on that weed guard. That will come. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit on this eye. Because all I'm trying to do is get it locked in. And do the same on the opposite eye, working it off the edge of the eye. Now we're going to work some gravity here. By spinning, I get all of the, um, the um, it like makes an even coat. A couple bubbles there I don't like. Don't want bubbles. So we can go in there and pop those. try to spin 
kind of the same in both directions. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, lock these in. Now I'm going to put a little more. I'm going to go over the top here. A little between. There's no rush. You don't have to, you can build in layers. I think, again, I think it's really important that, that um, you take your time and you just use the laws of physics here to get the resin where it needs to be. Once you're happy with the way it looks, and I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. I think it's a little too clumpy in my weed guard there. So I'm going to work that out. Otherwise, I like the way it looks. Just like that. Zap it. I always change the angle when I'm zapping it. Now these eyes are locked in hard. So if I get a toothy critter, if I get a cuda or a, a snapper or something big, a vicious bite from like a goliath or something, um, I'm fairly confident that the eyes aren't going anywhere. And man, look at, look at that glow in the dark stuff shine. Wow, that looks cool. I'm excited to try that. I think that I want just a tiny bit more resin near the front here. Give it a little bit more the shape I'm looking for. good. I think that that's looking sharp. Time for a new battery in my lamp. That's looking really sharp and the uh, weed guard isn't going anywhere. And this fly right here is locked in and somebody's knocking on my door. Okay, so I'm back. So that was actually pretty cool. It was a bunch of little girls selling, um, I don't even know what they were selling, magazines or something for their soccer team. I think that's cool. I like when the kids are out selling instead of begging. I'd much rather purchase something from them than just give them a donation. So now everything is um, locked in. All I got to do now is trim the um, weed guards. I'm going to trim them just longer than the hook. Just like that. I think they look good. They're nice and hard. And this fly is going to go sit in my windowsill and uh, bake all day tomorrow. 
and actually I can show it to you like this. So there it is, the micro um, cockroach, Sikwili micro roach, I'm gonna call it, with a wee guard. And, and this is, again, this is a super inexpensive fly, a couple of feathers, a little bit of deer hair, some flash. So this is a fly that if I throw it up into a mangrove and the wee guard doesn't save me, it's not the end of the world. It's not a super duper expensive, hard to tie fly. So I don't mind rolling the dice on this guy. And uh, hope you have, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you have a great time catching fish. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. It, it actually helps a lot when you subscribe. And um, yeah, you know, it's a great time of year. It's fall, it's football season. My Canes beat Texas A&M yesterday. So I'm happy and uh, fishing's great. College football, what more could we ask for? Thank you again for watching. See you on the next video.